Right, so recently I made a video about Laravel Docker where I dockerized the Laravel application alongside a queue worker, an nginx a caddy web server, and a database and a Redis. And many people liked the video, they, I had a positive response, so I'm thankful for that, but also many people wanted a production version of the application. They wanted something to go to production easier. So in this video, I made the exact thing that you want for you, and I'm going to upload it to GitHub later, and you'll see it in the description of this video. Uh, and what this is essentially is a more production-ready Laravel uh, dockerized environment with a database Redis, with web server, with a queue worker, and the actual Laravel application. It has file serving with Nginx. It has file upload. I've also integrated Tailwind with it. And I've added some quality of life improvements. Laravel will be strict, so you can't have any lazy... Uh, loading any n plus one queries and also i've added when the docker build is ran and completed we can also have a script file that will actually execute important things like like running migrations and uh, optimizing cache so that's a huge thing that we have to do laravel php is not you know it's not on the good words of side of the internet so it's it's kind of a slow language it's really slow so we need to actually optimize things as much as we can for in order for it to run efficient so one more thing before i start with this video and showing you walking you through the the project i saw many resources about laravel uh, dockerizing it and so on and many of these resources are either outdated or they don't give enough information and the resources that do are behind a paywall people essentially require you to pay hundreds of dollars 100 200 300 dollars for a template that's working that you can reliably use in production so i don't want you guys to pay that much money because they, that's that's a lot of money and i think you deserve to know this without breaking your back and 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 losing weeks and months of your life just to set something up and then you're unsure if if even it will work so i want to give you guys this this essentially for free i don't want to sell you anything and so please like the video so that other people that are looking for this can see without breaking their back and looking for count, spending countless hours on the internet trying to trying to find this or having to pay $200 for a template. So with that out of the way, let's get started. We have a Docker file here and this Docker file is composed of five services. And I'm going to walk you through everything here. I'm going to explain you uh, the, the, the services one by one. So we have an app here. This is the actual Laravel application and its context is inside this backend directory. That's the initialized Laravel application. It has, it depends on the database, it has its own ENV file, which we'll need, and it has volumes. These are Docker volumes that we need for storage and for the actual code base. The next thing is the service, this service is a queue worker, essentially. It's the same application, just that it's it works as a queue worker. So once we have a job that needs to be executed, this service will execute it. The next thing is NGNX. We need a web server, we need to have a reverse proxy, and we need this for file serving. One thing, when you go to production, remove port 80 and update something in the nginx com file which i'll show you later but you have to remove port 80 because we want hdps and you want ssl to, to have an ssl you don't want to open port 80 only port 443 this port 80 is just for us when we do local development to test this out we also have a database this is very trivial and we have a redis and you can see that we have this this environment property here, and it's just essentially initializing database with the required with the pass through credentials. And we have these credentials here in the ENV example and inside the ENV. This ENV example is pushed to GitHub, but this ENV is not. And when you clone the repository, you just copy the ENV example, create the .env file, and there you go. You can have anything here. Again, don't place these kinds of values inside your ENV files. You should you should get a complex password. The next thing here is before we go into the lab application is the nginx config. Again, the slight thing that you have to change it's, is 443, the server name, and then you just have to add Let's Encrypt here so you have an SSL, so that you have HTTPS. That's the only thing. We have the storage location, and this is where we will be able to access our files that we upload. And this is just calling the fast CGI pass. So we call this Laravel application that we have, and we pass the context to it. So, we, so you see app. And port 9000 we go to docker compose we have app port 9000 so this is essentially calling passing the request through and calling our app and now with that out of the way we can open our backend here and this is just a created laravel project with laravel new but i modified it added so for example you added the scripts directory here with the script and i added a docker file and some other things but we're gonna go through everything so the first thing is it's a docker file we have we are pointing to this Docker file from this app, 
and from the queue worker here. So in this Docker file, it's it's really simple. We have PHP FPM, and in the future, if you watch this two two years from now, just update the PHP FPM, and I think that should be it. There shouldn't be many things changing. We have a run command here to install packages. And as you can see, we have some Postgres client and we have NPM and Node.js. And we need this because we had a Tailwind and we want to have something. We want to compile that Tailwind to a CSS file and then build that file and then serve it with our web server. So that's why we need some of these things. We then install Composer. We then install required libraries here. So it's, for example, we need PDO, PG, SQL. We need these things because we have Postgres. If you're using MySQL, it should be different, but I recommend that we use Postgres. That's a really good database to have. And we have this for Redis and so on. We set our work directory inside user share nginx html. This is a very important part. We have to put our code there. Then we copy the entire code base, and then we install some things and set up some permissions. So for these things, we, we, we essentially, what we do is we install with Composer everything required without development dependencies because we don't need development dependencies, dependencies since we're going to production. We clear the cache, then we this command essentially adds all the configs for any packages with composers that we installed. We give permissions to storage, we give permissions to this user here, and then we give we create a directory for these sessions, views and cache. Then we ex well, then we copy the the scripts PHP FPM entry point to our user local bin PHP entry point, so inside the container, and it's inside the bin, and this is for binaries. Essentially, if you're on Windows, it's executables. We give them the permissions, then we execute this script, and then we run PHP FPM. And this script, this entry point here, this is the script execution. This script will do many important things, and it's located inside the scripts PHP FPM entry point. And you might think this is complex it's not just look at let's look at one thing at a time it has a shebang here at the top it's called a shebang this is for bash we have a main function and we check if is this an api worker is this just a worker that we need to dispatch queues and run execute queues yes if it is we skip everything we don't care about anything and you if you might you might ask yourself where is this coming from it's coming from docker compose you can see in the queue worker service there is an environment here that says, is worker true? So for queue workers, we don't want to do anything here. But if it's not, if it is a Laravel application that we have, then we will execute all of these functions. And essentially what we're doing is we're preparing file permissions. We are running npm run build. So we check for package JSON, then we run a clean install with CI, and then we run build. That's it. We then prepare the storage. We create these directories. Inside our work directory, you can see user share nginx HTML. Then we set the required permissions for the storage and we give the permissions to the required user. So this is the default user that's used. Then we run PHP Arts and Storage Link because we need to have the storage copied from storage to public directory in PHP. You should search that up in the documentations. We wait for the database. So we want the database to be ready. And then we run migrations. Then we optimize our application, and this optimize just runs caches for pretty much everything in Laravel. We clear it if it's if it's available, just in case, and then we optimize the application. Then we run server, and that's it. So we execute this main, and that's it. So fairly simple. Everything is set up. Everything is optimized. The migrations are running. Everything should be smooth sailing. Now, once we add these these two scripts and Docker, we can set our env variables so if we set our database to be db laravel admin123 and redis we have to go to our backend directory here and inside this env we will do the same so if we find redis redis password is redis you can see and inside inside our db is db laravel admin123 there you go now there's one thing when we're going to be running a container when we're going to be developing locally you want for local development to have 127.001 instead of db. And for the Redis part, let me see where's Redis. Redis host, yeah, 127.0.0.1. Why? Because we put the service names when we're running this in Docker. These containers in Docker Compose can communicate with each other without actually having to leave the the you can imagine that as a border around all of the containers they don't have to leave the docker network that's why when we're running in a docker environment we just put 
the service names. So this is going to be Redis, and this is going to be DB. But when we're running locally, we're just going to put 127.0.0.1. Now, after we set this all up, we set the ENV, we add the Docker Compose file, we add the Docker file, we add scripts, we add the ENV in our Laravel application. You go to our terminal, and you can see I'm in Laravel prod here. I'm going to zoom this in. And we're going to run Docker Compose Upbuild Detach. It's going to build the containers and it's going to set everything up. Okay, now that everything has been built, let's actually go to our Docker desktop and see what's happening. So if we go to Docker desktop, we have Laravel prod here. That's the stack. And we have all the services that we need. We have a Redis, Nginx, DB, the Laravel application, and the queue worker. So let's go to our Laravel application. And you can see we have everything that we listed from the script. We're installing the dependencies. And we, you can see we found zero vulnerabilities. Then we're running npm build, and it's compiling all the assets that are required, and it's actually compiling the Tailwind to a CSS that can be served. Then we're linking storage, just as we said, so that we can serve the files. After that, we're waiting for the database to be ready, and then we're running, mi running migrations that are required. Then we're clearing the cache, the optimize clear command, and then we're caching everything else. So you can see everything that we listed in the script, the PHP FPM entry point, is being executed. And this is really nice to have. You don't have to manually type this in or go into inside the container and do this manually each time. The next thing we should go to is Nginx. And you can see Nginx is up and running. Everything's nice. And let's actually see how this works. So if I go to my browser here and I go to localhost, you see, I have my Laravel application. Now, I just added this so that we can see the version of the application. But let's test out what I promised at the beginning of the video. If we go to routes and we go to web, inside the web.php file here, we have this route, the root entry point, and we have upload the endpoint, which serves a file. So let's find that file in views, upload blade PHP, and you can see some tailwind classes here. So let's see if I go to upload and let's see if this will work. So if I go to upload here, you see, we have everything nice and ready. It's served and just, I'll change some stuff later to show you that uh, Tailwind is working. Let's select the file and I can go to meta logo. See, we uploaded meta logo and let's upload this. And it says file uploaded successfully to uploads and then it gave an ID. So now we want to see if our application will serve the files. So what we can do is go to storage slash uploads and then the file name that's, that's been uploaded. Storage slash uploads file name. And there you go. You have the image served successfully. Now you might be asking, is this actually production ready? I don't want Laravel to serve this. Let's see. If we go to nginx here and I reload this and I do a hard reload, it should be logging it. If it doesn't log here, it should have the file that logs. But as you can see, if I reload this, I'm reloading this with a hard reload with control shift R, nothing is getting here. Nothing is getting to our application, our Laravel application. If it required our Laravel application to work, it would, it would log it here. So if I go back to our uploads, I think it's upload, yeah? You can see that it's being logged. So if I spam refresh here, you can see that I'm getting the endpoints. But if I go back to our image that's being served, you see nothing's happening. So this is efficiently being served from our NGNX. And in real production environments, and I think they're popping up right now. Let me do some hard reloads. I think they're popping. I'm not sure why it's not popping instantaneously, but you can see the Firefox logs here and that's from our browser since Zen browser is based from Firefox. And you can see that Nginx is actually serving the files and that's a really important thing because Nginx is very fast, Laravel is, Laravel is very slow and we want Nginx to serve everything. So now that we have file upload done, I also want to show you some other things. So in my code for file upload here, I also added a job to be dispatched. So if a file is successfully uploaded, I just add an example job that says log created user. And what this does, you can see this is a job, should queue use queuable. When we handle that job, it's just the logs user has been created. So we uploaded the meta file, right? The meta logo. Let's actually go to our Docker desktop here 
and check if the queue worker is running. So if we go here, log created user here is done. It works and it's executed in 10.9 milliseconds, 09 milliseconds. I'm not sure why this is, I think this is before being connected. I think this container spun up first, but that's, it's, it's not a big deal. So you can see that the job was created, the job is running and the job is done. So you have the worker being, the world worker is working properly. We have the application that can upload files and has Tailwind integrated. And I want to show you this. If we go to inspect, and I didn't use this uh, Firefox console in a, while, in a long while, but you can see that the document is being served and everything is, everything is in accordance to actually using something in production. So our web server is the one doing the heavy lifting and PHP is just calculating what's needed to be done and just passing it through. So we have minimal stress on our actual Laravel application. The queue is working and our web server is working. Of course, the Redis is working because we have jobs when we're using Redis and the database is working because migrations have passed. Again, have no idea what this cache is, probably something very stupid that's, uh, that I forgot or when I run, when I ran. But we have everything set up and now we can comfortably go to production. If I don't want to go to production, I want to locally develop things, it's also really simple. You can just pause the containers or delete them, it doesn't matter. And what you want to do is you want to run Laravel and you want to run the npm run build. Now, before running Laravel, you know what we said. You go to .env, we find the DB host, we say 1.7.7001. We copy this, we go to Redis, we change the Redis host, and then we, we say, okay, we are in Laravel prod. Let's go to CD backend. And then we can say PHP artisan serve. It serves the application. Then we go to CD backend and we say npm run dev so that V is working. You can see a Laravel and the version of Laravel. Now what happens is if I go to Zen browser and I say one point HD, actually I'm gonna copy this. I don't, I don't need to, to paste it in, to type it in manually. We copy this, it's HTTP, HTTP. there you go. Everything's working. Let's go to slash upload. It's working. And just so you can see that we have hot module reload, hot reload, it's not module reload. Well, let's change, let's change this to, I think 6XL works. There you go. Let's give it a text red 500. There you go. So everything's working. Everything is set up. Local development is easy. Now, again, you're satisfied with this. You made your changes. You have get status. You see the files that you changed. Well, I want to go and build this and actually test it from the Docker environment. Again, you go back to .env, you find the DB host, you set it to DB, you find the Redis host, you set it to Redis. And now we can again do the same thing. We go to our terminal, we run Docker Compose up, build attach. Once it's done, we go back to our browser here. Of course, this doesn't work. We have to say localhost. I'm going to say localhost, it's working. Let's go to uploads. There you go. We have a Docker environment now and everything is changed. Everything is working. So that's it. I'll put a link to this repository in the description. And I really hope that this is useful for you. And please leave a like so that people can see this. And then they can stop searching for a production-ready Laravel Docker environment. And until next time, bye.